He's acting like he's got something in his nose. He's trying to blow it out. <laughs> Encounter number one with Kelsey. I thought that was going to happen there for a minute. Fifteen plus bucks, breeding, fighting. I mean, it's. We didn't see another deer throughout the rest of the day. It'd be one of the best hunts I've ever had. So. Encounter number two for this year with Kelsey. Um, I thought it was going to happen there for a second. Kelsey is down. I believe that kid together. Hard to believe the season's over already. Here it is, January 15th. Of course, the season closed January 10th here in Iowa. There is still a couple of doe seasons that are open in certain counties. There's like four or five counties, I think, where it's antlerless only. If you're participating in those, obviously you want to be real careful about the shed buck situation. There's a lot of shed bucks right now, so watch out for that. Also, we've got our internship program going right now. The application enrollment period is right now. So if anybody's interested in that, head over to our social media pages, or there's a link in the description right here. You can check it out there as well. We've got some good off-season stuff coming up. I've just acquired an 80-acre parcel that's almost all cover, which for the farms I've ever owned, that's hard to find. Usually they're a mix, maybe 50-50, but this one's almost all cover, so That'll be a little different. It'll take a lot more work, you know, clearing food plots. But the nice thing is you can put everything exactly where you want it. You know, a lot of times you're limited to uh, maybe open ground. You don't want to go clear a forest or whatever. But so this one will be a little different and a lot of fun. Some of you guys might also know that Mike took down that Kelsey buck after a season long quest. So that's awesome. Congratulations, Mike. I really hope you guys enjoy the story. It is September 17th, Saturday, and Belle and I are tucked into the redneck blind. Out here on the river bottom farm, the primary target that I'm gonna be after right now is uh, a buck we named Kelsey. It's a buck in the past, we've called him the inside points, but this is our fourth year of history with him. I filmed him quite a few times when he was a three-year-old, four-year-old. He looks really good this year. He put on a few more inches and he's pretty ripe for harvest at six and a half and I'm getting this picture pretty regular we've had him through velvet now he's hard horn and I think it'll be a good buck for me to be able to strategize and hunt there's definitely a few other deer out here that I'm looking forward to showing up and as those guys pop up my hit list might change but for now Kelsey's gonna be my primary target out here otherwise we've got about an hour left hopefully one of these big boys shows up Hey guys, it is Thursday, October 6th, and it is my first official sit of the 2022 Iowa archery season. I've got a trail camera on this mode lane just up the way, and I've got a few pictures of our my primary target this year, what we're calling Kelsey. And there's been probably four or five different nights that he's been out. It's just been all over the farm. I mean, he's not really in one little spot. So for a six and a half year old, he's covering six, seven, 800 acres, something like that. Looking for some good fortune on the first hit of the year. You ready? 
<laughs> uh, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> That's like awesome. <laughs> you were just saying how much you like that deer. I told you. <laughs> I was just thinking about if he walked out. <laughs> Can't make this up. Hey guys, it is October 15th. We had a front blow through yesterday and the high temps today are about 60 and uh, decided to come set the pinch. My primary target is Kelsey. He actually came through this morning. We just got pictures from this morning a little while ago. Good to see him coming through here. He's been so active on the whole property that you never quite know where he is, but his pattern has been that if he you know, comes in kind of late morning to bed, it was 7.30, he, he probably is better in the peninsula here, so hopefully he works his way back out. We're gonna get settled in and see how the hunt goes. Good morning. It is Thursday, October 27th. Got a nice cool morning. It's mid 30s. Ryan and I are back down at the River Bottom Farm. We're back in this pond set that we hung last weekend and hunted uh, last weekend. We filmed that broken G210 and then that nice young eight with the flyer, big brows. We got that front that blew through Wind switched out of the north, everything cooled off. You know, it rained, and so the scrapes have been, I mean, all the bucks are hitting the scrapes. The cameras have been going crazy. We got pictures of Kelsey back in the, the big peninsula. He had been fighting, he's got hair missing off of his shoulders and blood and everything else, so they're really feeling it. We're gonna enjoy the sunrise for a couple more minutes and then see if we can't rattle Kelsey in. Kelsey. I can see Kelsey walking to the left. All right, that doe's coming in here. That's him right there in the light, in the sunlight. You see him? Yes, sir. Okay, red tree. He's coming this direction. See him?
encounter number one with Kelsey. I thought that was gonna happen there for a minute. He, he was off on the other side of the peninsula and I just spotted a group of deer, I spotted a small buck. And I couldn't see him very well, just glass, and all of a sudden he was in the group. And so when he got along the river and was heading away from us, I did a little rattling. And then I spotted him, he started working a scrape. And then he, he made his way this direction. And the closest he got was about 46 at walking. And when he got down to these logs right here, I was hoping he'd turn and come on this side. But he, he stood there and looked around and uh, he stopped at 55 right on the trail that a point came down this morning and I was hoping he would turn and follow, but he ended up going into the peninsula. So it's not over yet. I'm shook up. Yeah. <laughs> we were in here after Kelsey, and uh, I mean, it took me about two seconds to make up my mind if I want to shoot him or not. Mike has been so kind, just give me all these targets to choose from, and I've got my first Iowa boat buck on the ground. Good morning. November has arrived. We're in this pond set again. Kelsey's still been active on camera. He was he was on this camera down the lane. And it was actually daylight on the south plot the night after Rye shot his buck at 5.30 p.m. So despite being in there the night before and the morning tracking Rye's buck, he was still right there in the same area. So he seems pretty locked in on this, this area of the farm and I'm just gonna stay after him. I think our paths will cross here before too long. Hey guys, it's the afternoon of November 5th, Saturday. As you can see, it's pretty windy. We just had a front blow through. Kelsey was active yesterday midday. I checked pics midday today, and uh, he was actually working this scrape on the corner there near the, near the cut corn at 9 p.m. midnight, and then again at like 2 a.m. So that leads me to believe he was probably bedded right there with the doe. I mean, to work the same scrape four, three times in a five hour period. Gives me a little bit of excitement that maybe he's bedded not too far with the doe. He's been active here a lot in the afternoons. Hopefully he follows her out to this green food source where they stage before working their way out to the cut corn. Fingers crossed. Turn in 10 it is. I just he's in the open. Oh, what a fun night in the tree. That's encounter number two for this year with Kelsey. He just worked his way through there. The closest he got was about 70. It's tough to funnel him down on this farm. There's only a few spots you can do that, but 
There is one right there between the two fields, kind of right where he went. I think that's an area I'm gonna try to get once we get a north wind. Whenever that, that rain quit and the sun came out, the wind died down, it was, I mean, someone turned the light switch on, so it was a really fun afternoon. I'm not sure exactly where we're gonna be in the morning, but we're gonna get back to the camp and, and, and take a look at the map, strategize, and we'll catch up with you guys tomorrow. That's not something you see every day. Looks like a pretty mature deer. Old daggers. There's an all-out brawl right there. He's running. He's running away. Since we got to the base of the tree, we made it in clean, took our time walking up the ditch, got to the base of the tree, and I got about three rungs up and I looked and I could see a chase coming. And then they, they ran off to the east. So I got up here and I just looked back over and the chase was coming back, but this time Kelsey was with them. Anyway, he ran that little buck off all the way to the east and then they came flying back through and went off to the north. Was able to get the stand home, got up here, got everything set up. So hopefully that, you know, they make a loop and come back through here. Just pure chaos. This is, we're on the edge of this bedding area and the plan almost came together, but uh, it's cool to see him for the third time. Sunday, November 13th, Ryan and I are back in the same set we were in last night, this beaver pond set where I killed my buck on October 6th. We had Kelsey at 60 yards. He's been in this central timber the last two days, and I'm, I'm hoping he's still without a doe, still, still running around. I think if that's the case, we should have a good chance of encountering him here today. Basically, big doe bedding area right in front of us. And, uh, we can see a lot of it, so it's a good setup for calling. They're slowly working their way back in here, but we're starting to see 
deer on the move already, so sit back and enjoy the morning. Maybe him. I think it's him, dude. Yeah, it's him. That's encounter number four, and uh, that one certainly stings a little. Rye spotted a, a deer on the other side of the, the ditch over there, and I put it in the binos, and sure enough, I'm like, it's him. He's, and then he just is walking straight at the tree, and we're not really set up for deer to come that direction. I set this up for when there's water in the slough, and the deer don't really cross it. They come, they come around the edge of it. Um, anyway, this year, with everything being so dry, we've noticed this pattern on these four or five hunts of deer, you know, working this angle. Like I said, we're not really set up for deer to come that direction, so our stands are sticking off this tree either direction, so we're, we're sort of silhouetted, and we have a little bit of back cover with the other trees behind us, but um, it's not great, so it wasn't too hard for him to see that something was going on. A little surprising how, how strongly he reacted, but uh, I was really hoping to get it done today, but that close. encounter number five I spotted that doe crossing the slough and getting on that lane that our other stands on and then I could see him back behind her in the slough 
And like I mentioned earlier, the pattern has been they walk up this little ditch and they cross right here. So I thought for a second, you know, man, we're gonna have them work right in. What's crazy is when we walked out the other day, and actually the last few times I've been there, I've been eyeballing a red oak, a pin oak over there. And after seeing all the deer walk through there, I was like, man, we need to get a set in that, in that tree. And that's actually where I planned on hunting this morning. It just was a little too big. I didn't feel safe. You know, there was not enough of the rope through the cam. And uh, they walked to the base of that tree. <laughs> so it's beautiful. It's, it's fun to see him in the snow, but boy, I want to get him in bow range. We know he's with the doe, and we know he's pretty close, so we're not completely out of the game. Well, it's Tuesday, January 3rd, and we are back down at the River Bottom Farm. I'm actually in the same blind I hunted last night. We moved this blind here. Uh, it's a redneck blind on a trailer, and this is the South Corn Plot. This is where Kelsey's been the most active, and so I just feel like, um, you know, with the countdown to the end of the season in play, I need to spend as much time as I can sitting in this blind. Rye has taken Bella back to the home farm tonight, hoping Big Mac will show up. And then I've got Gavin with me tonight, and we're down at the, the river bottom farm, as I mentioned, trying to get Kelsey. We've got a southwest wind, which blows this, blows our wind kind of back up this tree line, which is not perfect for this blind, but it's it's good enough to catch the movement out of the peninsula. This kind of classic movement pattern we talked a lot about. A lot of these deer are bedded back in the peninsula and owners work their way through this food pot and on. I've got the Ozonics outside on the porch trying to capture whatever scent might escape from the blind. And hopefully that works. Got a few hours to go. Looking forward to the scent. They're just walking around in that sound bedding. We've seen that buck every time, that front one. Another fun sit in the books. Uh, right at the end there, we had daggers pop out. He's moved back into this area, which I'm not used to seeing him over here, and then we haven't seen Kelsey, so I'm gonna have to try to get back to the drawing board and figure out where Kelsey might be coming out. We actually, I was talking with Gavin about getting Gavin to shoot daggers. He's a great mature buck. I think he's a six-year-old. And uh, as we're talking about this, he just picked up and started walking. And he got right through all of our windows over here. And as we were trying to switch cameras and get the gun up and all that, he, um, you know, he he ran over to the other food plot. So another another fun hunt. We'll be back out tomorrow, and hopefully we can have some luck then. Wednesday, January 4th, Gavin and I are 
tucked back into the same redneck blind we hunted last night down at the river bottom farm. We're after Kelsey. Nice swinging temperature today. It's it's 32 degrees, and with the wind, it feels like 22. You know, yesterday was about 60, so nice temperature drop. The pressure's on the rise. We've had snow flurries throughout the day, so I'm hoping that's the the change we need to get Kelsey out in front of us in daylight. We did the same thing tonight where we split up. Rye is with my wife Catherine on the home farm. Bella decided last minute uh, she has some other stuff she needs to do. She's back at school tomorrow. And so my wife is um, out there going after Anna's buck. So we're gonna stay in touch with them. Hopefully uh, they can have some good fortune tonight. Anna's buck was there this morning. Ended up getting some pictures around lunchtime. And so, um, you know, hopefully he pops out tonight. We actually had pictures of Kelsey on this food plot in the middle of the night, so he's still using this area. I'm still banking on him bedding back in the peninsula. We have the same wind we had last night. It's like a west-southwest, so it kind of blows between the two food plots. Another deer I'm pretty interested in seeing here is DK. He's a five-year-old. For those of you who follow the show, you know, we've had him on the farm for a while, and we actually saw him the other night when Bella killed the 6x6. Six I've been a little bit on the fence about whether or not I'd shoot him. We'll start to see. I think with a bow, he'd be really hard to pass. I think, though, being January 4th and basically haven't made it through the year, I think, you know, I'm kind of erring on wanting to let him pass. So anyway, it's been an internal struggle as far as that's concerned. But really looking forward to Kelsey. So hopefully he comes out first and makes it easy on me.
went down he dropped right there <laughs> Kelsey is down <laughs> oh man I cannot believe that came together to pass DK <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, buddy. The quest for Kelsey is over. That's the buck of it after all season. For all of you that have been following along, you've known of he's kind of had my number. That's uh that's encounter number six with him. And I've had him within 50 yards. Man, at least three different times, four different times. And, uh, you know, we've been, this is the third night in a row in this blind. We got the weather we needed. I think we had 50 deer out here tonight. And uh, no way I'm letting Kelsey get out of the field. You know, I, was, I wish he would have walked right up the road like these other ones right here in the bow range. But he dropped right in his tracks. I get out of here and get down and go check him out. Super pumped. Got him. <laughs> Did you really? Guess what happened? No way. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great guess. <laughs> guess guess which one I shot. See if you can guess. Kelsey. <laughs> yeah, Kelsey's dead, man. Oh, Can't wait to get my hands on this thing. Oh Kelsey, god dang. It's crazy to think back the last four years how much he's grown, you know. Management at its finest right there. What's up, Rye? <laughs> Hard working man. Yes, sir. <laughs> Holy cow. Man. What do you think about that? I think. Pretty awesome to see him up close finally. <laughs> It's a pretty surreal feeling to finally be able to catch up with Kelsey. It's been a long season chasing him, and he's been one of the more difficult uh, bucks for me to hunt over the years. Presented a nice challenge. 
that south end of the farm, you know, I've owned it for a couple of years, but last year was really the first year that I spent a number of days on it. And uh, you learn a lot just sitting out there, how the deer move through it. There's not a lot of topographical features to help drive deer movement. And so you really need to just observe the patterns. And this year presented another challenge being a drought year. You know, last year what I saw is that a lot of the water features on the property, the sloughs, the old oxbow lakes, uh, help steer deer movements and pinch them down in certain areas. And this year we had a really bad drought, so nothing had water in it. And uh, so the deer would just kind of freely walk everywhere. And that, that certainly presented a challenge. You know, we were able to get Kelsey within 50 yards four different times and had him at 80 yards another time. And it just never quite worked out. And so moving on to late season, I was getting pictures of him sort of all over the farm. He's one of these bucks that has moved around more than any other mature buck I've hunted. I mean, at six and a half years old, he's covering over a thousand acres of ground. Eventually, I just committed to the, some of the prior knowledge. Last year, he spent more time on the north end of the farm. Despite us hunting him all year this year on the south end during the rut, I thought, you know, he's probably gonna end up back up here. And so we used the mobility of the redneck trailer blind to make a move. I didn't have a blind set up to really hunt this end of the farm. So we, we pulled one of those redneck trailer blinds, which if anyone's looking for a nice way to be mobile and, and uh, be able to be more strategic, it's hard to beat that. The big thing that I feel like led to our success is this big weather change we had. I mean, we had a 40 degree temperature swing. It was 60 the day before and it was about 20 the night we shot him. You know, a lot of history with this deer. The first year, that we started, started paying attention to him was when he was three years old, and that was back in 2019. And uh, I haven't had a chance to filter through all the footage yet and see how many encounters with him, but there's one very memorable encounter with him just out in the middle of the wetland, and that was the night that I actually passed Prodigy. I had Prodigy come in to 35 yards, and it was cool to see him up close and in person. Back then, we referred to him as the inside points buck, and that's because his G4s on both sides really pointed inward. It's really cool from a deer management standpoint to watch these deer grow and how they change and just what they become. He's, he's such a cool buck. We have a few days left of season. rye has got a tag, Gavin's got a tag. I still have an archery tag. Uh, my wife has a tag. You know, we still have tags to fill. So we're gonna hunt till the very end. We've got some good condition these last few days and, and we'll see if we can't catch up with any of these other bucks. As always, we appreciate you guys following along. I hope you enjoyed the chase for Kelsey as much as I did. Hunt safe and good luck.